Are you ready? Ready for this? Ready? As you can see, I am filming in my bedroom, which I've never been able to do before because the lighting in here is really bad. Like really, really bad. Like you saw before I turned on the light, it's really bad. But thanks to my awesome boyfriend who got me a ring light, now I can film wherever the heck I want, including in my room with all my animals behind me, which I've never been able to do. So very exciting. Yo, today's video is one that has been planned for a whole year now. Like I was filming for this video a year ago and then just never got around to it. So we're finally doing that. So this video is gonna be on wild caught animals and my experience with wild caught animals and my opinion on wild caught animals. So to start off, I just wanna talk about what it means to be wild caught. So wild caught means that the animal is taken from the wild, from its native habitat, and then brought into the pet trade and sold as a pet. So that is what it means to be wild caught. You know, typically they come from other countries and they're shipped into the US where they're sold at stores or at expos. So yeah, that's what it means to be wild caught. So going into my experience with wild caught animals. So in the time that I have been keeping reptiles, I have had three wild caught animals. One was Momo my Peter's Banded Skink, who never made it onto this channel. But you guys will finally get to see him um, because after I tell you the animals that I have or have had, I'm going to be putting in all of the footage that I recorded from when I had Momo. So you will get to see him and what we kind of dealt with. So Momo was one of them. Um, Yeti, my Toke Gecko, who's no longer with us, as many of you know, was also wild caught. And then Tinsel, my Sunbeam Snake, who I still have. Um, the other two did come from a vendor at an expo, but Tinsel was rehomed to me. She was rescued by a rescue in Florida and then adopted by a girl in Pennsylvania who then rehomed her to me. So she's been all over the place, but I am her final home. Um, but she is doing very well. So now before I get into their stories a little bit, um, we, like I said, I'm going to show you all of the footage from when I had Momo because he was like the epitome of having a wild caught animal and like worst case scenario of having a wild caught animal. So I'm going to put all of that footage in right now. So let's throw it back a year and yeah. Hi guys, welcome back. So this is Momo. He is a Peter's Banded Skink. I just got him on Saturday and he is going to the vet today. So what I wanted to do was introduce you to Momo, um, take you to the vet. I'm not sure how much I'm going to film at the vets because honestly that's something I'd want to do kind of like hidden, not just whip out my camera and be like, hey, vet, so uh, I'm going to record you, okay? So uh, I don't know how much I'm going to get the vet, but, you know, I'll see what I can do. And then I want to talk to you about why Peter's Banded Skinks don't make good pets, at least not at the time being. Got Momo in his little travel tub uh, with a heating pack, it's a water jug, a rubber water jug, so you just put warm water in it wrapped in a towel and then a towel for him to bury himself in. So we're off to the vet. This is my first time going to this vet. It's the same vet I would take Arcadius to, but I haven't actually gone there yet. So we'll see how it goes. Also, I'm dropping my car off at the shop before the vet and I'm just going to walk to the vet's office and then back to the car shop and they do take a while to work on my car. So I'm just going to be walking around the city with a skink in a tub basically. So yeah. Eyes are watering. If I blow the wind in the wind, I'd like to donate my collection of animals to the zoo and my friends.
go in at a very shallow angle just like that and then squirt. So you really in. didn't go in that far. So not forward. very far at all because it's a very, very short needle. You really have to go in about that far. Right. Um, he looks, he looks pretty good otherwise. Um, belly feels okay. So I'm just kind of worried about this area and mm -hmm. it being so crusted over. Unfortunately, he's, his scales don't seem in particularly good condition and they're they seem to peel away with pretty minimal kind of touch or trauma so um I know so I'm finally home it's like 6 30. it took forever to get my car fixed yeah and I was at the vet for a while but anyway so his bump on his tail has gotten worse every single day. And it's to the point now where he's losing scales. And it was actually bleeding today. Sorry, I'm making dinner. I'm starving. But he was actually bleeding when she was kind of rubbing it with hot water and soaking it. And so she gave him a antibiotic and sent me home with some. So I have to give him a shot every three days. I don't like needles. So this is gonna be quite an adventure. Um, I also got a topical like cream to put on his scabs and on that spot. So here's hoping we're on the upside now. We're going to be getting better. But a little bit about these animals. Sorry, you're looking at my messy kitchen. A little bit about these animals. They are from Northern Africa and pretty much everyone you find is going to be wild caught. As far as I've seen, no one has had luck with captive breeding. So they're all wild caught. They don't do well in captivity. There's not a lot of information on them. So they're super sweet, which makes them a great pet. But at the same time, they haven't been captively bred yet. There's not a lot of information. So they're really not a good pet. And this is what I didn't know when I bought Momo. I knew people had them. I've seen them on Instagram. And I knew their basic care, so I was like, oh, I know what I need to know. People own them, but they're doing great. I know their basic care, so I really want one. Here they are, now or never, let's get it. And I knew that he did have some scabbing, but he, the breeder was asking, <laughs> the breeder, the vendor, was asking next to nothing for him. So I was like, you know what, I'll buy him for this price and I'll put the rest of the money towards vet bills. I figured I'd take him to the vet anyway. That's when I, it's like 24 hours, 48 hours later, I noticed the bump on his tail and it kept getting worse and that's really where all the money went. So, you say I had a pretty expensive vet bill. So, yeah. Yeah, currently he is in quarantine. So he's down here, far away from all of my other animals. And hopefully we're gonna get this fixed. So I put the ointment on him, I just put him in his tub, and now I'm going to make him some scrambled eggs, and that's it for tonight. Alright, so day one of treatment at home. We're starting off by emptying all the sand out of his enclosure. I'm gonna line it with paper towels, maybe throw in a towel so he can feel safe and like bury himself in it. But yeah, so it's a 30 gallon tank with 25 pounds of sand. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna try and see if I can get it all into a garbage bag. Well, wish me luck. Oops. So yesterday he got his first injection and last night I put the ointment on before I put him back in the tub. So I'm going to call this day one of treatment. I'm going to pull him out and I'm going to put the ointment on him this morning and then, well this afternoon, it's like 11 o'clock and then I'll do it again tonight before I go to bed. So I'm going to go get him. 
Alright, so I have one sleepy little skink. Good morning, Mama. <laughs> so, after I put the ointment on, let's see how he's looking today. I know, Mama, I know. So here's a spot on his chin. That actually looks looking real good. Here's a spot on the back of his tail. Oh, it's gonna start wiggling. And the underside, which is where the real problem is, it's right there. So, I, I won't say it's looking better yet, but I'm hopeful. So let's go ahead and do this little treatment. All right, so the stuff that I'm putting on him is silver sulfa dazine. I'm probably not saying that right, but I know this is used a lot in reptile medicine. So I set the tube and I'm going to put a little bit on his chin, the top of his tail, and then underneath his tail. Oh boy, I'm so sleepy. Hey mama. I know buddy, I know. Good boy. Good boy. Just try to make you feel better. No, just try to make you feel better. Now we just have to get the underneath of his tail, which he does not like me messing with. So mad his sand is gone. He's like, what the heck, guys? Yep, so here's the hospital tank. It's gonna be a great time. Alright, round two. It is like 9.30. I'm going to take him out. I'm going to soak the bottom of his tail and reapply the ointment. And that will be it for day one of treatment. So sleepy. Poor bug. Alright. So there's a spot on his tail. How's your chin look, buddy? There's his chin. And his tail. We're gonna soak his tail with warm water and put the ointment stuff back on. Today, I just gave Mama his first injection. My roommate helped me. She tried to keep him still while I injected him. It's not easy to stick a needle in a lizard. Try to get right between his scales, get it just a little bit under the skin, and I literally could not do it. The few times I like for sure got it under the skin, he moved. So then it came back out and I started all over again. Finally, I thought I had it. So I'm like, all right, we're just gonna push the syringe, hope for the best. So I pushed it and now the ointment was on top of his scales, not inside of him. So that was a waste of one day of treatment, like one day of the medicine that I have to give him. So now I'm like all stressed out because I really want him to get better, but here's some antibiotics that he didn't get because I couldn't get it under the skin. I should have just gone with the oral medication. Alright, we're on day four. I don't know if he's sleepy or being lethargic. He seemed kind of lethargic last night, which is worrying me, but it's like maybe 10 o'clock, so it's daytime, so he should be sleepy, so. Hi, buddy. Hi, hey, little man. Poor bud. I'm not sure about his tail. I almost think it's looking worse because it looks like it's starting to come around the sides now. The top of his tail, I think, might be looking a little better. Let's see your chin, buddy. I know, I know, I know. So there's the chin. That's definitely looking better. But... I'm not sure about that. I don't know. So 
I haven't updated you guys in a while. Um, it is now Thursday, so I've almost had Momo for two weeks. He's not looking too much better. Um, the initial area on his tail hasn't really changed. The area around it has kind of swollen up a little bit, but it doesn't look nearly as bad as the initial area did. But anyway, I failed at giving him his second injection. So there goes two antibiotics, just gone. So I was like, okay, I need him to get his medication. I clearly stink at being a vet and giving antibiotic injections. So I called the vets and told them I wanted the oral antibiotics instead. So I just picked that up and it only cost me $12. The injections cost me over $60. So I wish I had known that when I originally came here. Could have saved me some money, but it is what it is. Hopefully he gets better now. So excuse me, I look gross, but I realize I haven't updated you guys on Momo's situation in a quite a while. Um, so after I switched to the oral antibiotics, his tail stopped swelling, it stopped spreading, it started to look better. I'll put a picture here. I wanted to be better about, sorry I had to move, someone pulled in and was watching me and it was kind of weird. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'll put a picture right here of what his tail now looks like. It wasn't as good as documenting it every day like I wanted to. But you can see the swelling did stop. Now it's just red. So I'm leaving the vet right now with Momo and back in because he now also has a respiratory infection. So he's been put back on antibiotics for his tail um, because just something is going to take a long time to heal. Reptiles take a long time to heal. And this was pretty bad, so it's going to take especially a long time to heal. Um, so I've got two antibiotics for his tail, for his respiratory infection, and an anti-inflammatory I think that's what the other one was um, but yeah so I've got three things to give him every day one is for 21 days one is for 14 days the other is for seven days um, so yeah All right, so that was everything that we dealt with, um, with Momo, my Peter's banded skink. I should have known that he was wild caught, like all the signs were there, like it was pretty obvious. Um, but when I got him, you know, he only had a little bit of scabbing and I thought that, you know, if I took him to the vet, I could get ointment or cream for it or whatever they give me for it. And that would be that and he would live a nice, happy little life. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but you know, I always say like, don't rescue the animal because you're just going to make them want to get more. But I absolutely love Peter's banded skinks. And when I saw Momo, it was just like, so I thought he's either A, not going to go home with anyone and live a crappy life, or someone's going to buy him because they are cute and not really know I mean, there's already, like, no information on caring for them, but not really know anything about caring for them and not take them to the vet because people don't think about reptiles going to the vet. And I knew that I would take him to the vet, so I got him. I shamefully got him. If I could rewind, I would not have done that. But in the moment, I was suckered in, and I did it. So oh, after I moved back home in December, I wasn't even home for a week and Momo did pass away unfortunately. Um, I went in one night to give him his medicine and he was gone. Um, so then fast forward to February or the end of February when, no, was it May? It was May that we lost Yeti, um, my Toke Gecko. So since I'd gotten her, she had had some problems with her nose like swelling up and looking huge and almost tumor-like um, off and on. So the first time it happened, I was pretty concerned about it, but it went away. So I was like, okay, you know, I think maybe she just like bumped it, rubbed it, and it was just kind of swollen and it went away. Um, and then fast forward to about February uh, when we were coming back from our cruise or when we were going on our cruise, I noticed that it was coming back and it wasn't going away. It kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I couldn't find a vet to look at her. I wasn't going to take her to our local vet because he doesn't see reptiles too often. And she was a toe cake echo that was wild caught and not handled. So I was 
he mm. and then when I went to my college graduation which was five hours away where I did have a very good reptile vet I tried calling them to see if because I couldn't bring her with me it was my college graduation we were going for days um and then going to a reptile expo so I called my vet and was just like you know if can I describe what it looks like? Can I bring you pictures to look at? Can you kind of give me an idea of your thoughts? Like, don't even, I'm not even asking you to prescribe me anything without looking at the animal. I just want to know your thoughts. And they told me no. Um, they said because I had never brought her in, that they wouldn't look at her, wouldn't look at the pictures of her, wouldn't, couldn't be, wouldn't be able to help me. Um, so my only other option was to drive her um, over three hours away at least to a vet but then again I still had to find a vet that would be willing to look at her being a toke gecko um, which was where I was at when I was coming back from my college graduation I was like that's it I'm gonna call all of the vets in like a five hour radius of me to see what I can do but when I came back from my college graduation she had unfortunately passed away so that's two out of three of my wild caught animals that didn't make it um, and the last one is Tinsel. Like I said, she was rehomed to me. I didn't go out and buy her. Um, most sunbeam snakes, well, all pretty much all sunbeam snakes you see um, are wild caught. They're just now finally starting to be successfully bred in captivity. Um, so I'll get a lot of messages about people wanting sunbeam snakes. And they're not entirely cut out for the captive life. They're pretty easy to provide for, but they're just not really cut out for the captive life which is going to lead me into my next segment or my next portion of this video, which is my opinion on wild caught animals, which you guys can already probably tell, I do not agree with wild caught animals uh, being sold into the pet trade, which might sound hypocritical because like I said, I did own three of them, um, but the first two that I actually purchased I did not realize they were wild caught despite the fact that I should have asked or should have known We'll talk about that in the next portion of this video, the last portion of this video. Um, so anyway, my opinion. I don't think animals should be taken out of the wild, shipped to America, and sold in the pet trade. There's a lot of issues with this. One being these animals are from the wild. So then they have to adapt to a captive lifestyle, which stresses them out. A lot of them do not handle this very well. And then going off of being stressed, just being shipped is very stressful because typically they're they're captured and then a bunch of them are stuffed together and then shipped and that shipping process and being stuffed with other of the same species and then i mean you typically uh i'll talk about that in the next part but um it's just like that whole process is super stressful it can really make them sick so a lot of times, by the time they get to an expo to be sold, they will have illnesses, they will be sick, they will be so stressed out. And another big problem with wild caught animals is parasites. A lot of animals out in the wild have parasites. So when you're purchasing a wild caught animal and bringing it in, you are also bringing those parasites or potential parasites in with you as well. So you want to make sure that you're getting a fecal done, quarantine and a fecal, so that you can see with a vet if they have any parasites and if they do what needs to be done to treat them now because of all of the stress and the traveling and potential illnesses and treating the parasites and adapting to captivity a lot of times this may shorten the lifespan of the animal i mean look at momo look at yeti a lot of sunbeams they don't last very long in captivity a lot of times making an animal come into a captive environment where we don't provide for it the way it's provided for out in the wild can lead to a shorter lifespan. And then the last issue with wild caught animals is the heavy vet bills. I became, I don't want to say in debt, but I paid a lot of money on Momo's vet bills. A lot more than I was expecting because we went in for just scabbing and he ended up having so many other issues. So I ended up dumping a ton of money into Momo's vet bills just to have him die on me within a couple of weeks. So that's something to keep in mind is that you're probably going to have pretty hefty vet bills when it comes to a wild caught animal. Um, 
if it's not already established in captivity. A lot of people sell wild caught animals that they've had for a while, they know they're established and they know they adapted well and that they're healthy, and then they sell them. And at least that way you know that they are, they were able to adapt to the captive lifestyle. They didn't just come directly from the wild. Um, I still don't agree with taking the animals out of the wild, but if you're gonna get a wild caught animal, making sure that it is already adapted to a captive lifestyle is a good idea. Now this whole time I've been talking about how I don't agree with taking animals out of the wild, but there are a couple occasions where I do understand it. So clearly to have all of these captive populations, you have to start somewhere. So I'm okay, more or less, with a breeder having wild caught animals with the intention of creating a captive population because you can't start a captive population if you don't start with wild animals. So I'm okay with that. If they want to start a captive population and they're gonna take two wild caught animals to do that, that saves all the other wild animals in the future because we won't have to take them from the wild. The other reason um, that I think taking animals from the wild is okay is for conservation purposes. If a species is endangered of going extinct, they can take a couple and kind of assist with breeding, create a breeding program to ensure that breeding is happening and going well and that a population will be growing. So for creating a captive population and for assisting with conservation, I'm okay with wild caught animals. Taking wild caught animals to sell them at an expo to make yourself money to people that don't know any better, I don't agree with that. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this video talking about how to tell if an animal is wild caught. Cause you know, when you go to an expo, there's animals everywhere. How do you know if they're wild caught or not? Now they're supposed to tell you. Um, if you go to the expo site, a lot of them will tell you, like this one has captive bred animals, this one has wild caught animals. And had I looked at the site while I was at the expo, I would have known that that vendor sold wild caught animals. But seriously, I wasn't thinking about like, oh, let me go to the website and look. Like, So Yeti was the first animal I got at that expo, the Tokay Gecko. A lot of times you can tell wild caught animal by the price. A lot of times they will be much, much cheaper than other reptiles. Now Yeti, her price did not tell me wild caught. Her price told me captive bred because I see tons of tokes sold for like $5 and they're mouth gaping and very clearly wild caught. She was totally calm, totally calm, cool, collected and much more than $5. So I was just like, oh, she must be captive bred. There's no way she's not. Well, she was cap or wild caught from Indonesia so had I asked, that's the number one thing I can tell you is to ask, don't assume. Looking at prices and just basing it off of an animal's behavior, that won't tell you anything. I can, like I said, the $5 toke that was freaking out, very clearly wild caught. But you never know unless you ask. So if it's not labeled or not very obvious or they don't tell you, ask, was this, did you breed this animal? Or was it wild caught? Is it captive bred or wild caught? Because they have to tell you. They can't not tell you or lie to you. They have to tell you. So always ask and always inspect. Like I said, Momo was pretty obvious or should have been pretty obvious because they all had little scabs on them and scarring. It should have been obvious, but I was just blindsided by my love for Momo. And it was just not a good expo. So I kind of have a negative, I won't say which expo it was, but I kind of have a bad mental connection with that particular expo because I walked away with wild caught animals that both died. <laughs> so that was not a good expo for me. I wasn't entirely using my head during that expo, which I'm not proud of, but it happened and I learned from it. And now I'm sharing my story with you so you guys can learn from it as well. So that is it for today's video. Let me know in the comments your opinion on wild caught animals and if you have any experience with wild caught animals. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you for the next video.